I know you do. He wants to minister to you. And he desires our praise today. He desires our honor and worship to him. He rides on the praises of his people. And this morning, I'm just going to ask the praise team to just, you know, let's just sing it to him. Cast leads us. Make it from your heart. No matter what you're going through today, what you're dealing with, let your faith arise, a declaration of faith to him. And sing it to Jesus. Sing it to him today. Just from the bottom of our heart, no music. Make it personable. Make it real to Him today. Cast lead us, and let's sing it to Jesus. What Let it be beautiful. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. Yes, you are. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. My what a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. Hallelujah. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, we stand on your word. We agree with that, Lord, and we believe it from our hearts today. You are God. You are faithful. You are king. You are in charge. And today, Lord, we turn everything over to you. And God, we just give it to the one that is able and willing today. No matter what we're dealing with, what we're facing today, God, we put you right in the midst and ask today that you would have your way. Minister, Lord, you are our king and our Lord today. We honor you. We worship you. You have no rival. You have no equal. You stand alone. And Lord, we praise you for that. Church, give him a clap off for the praise today. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we praise you today. Your Jesus. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You can be seated this morning. Stay in that spirit and atmosphere of honor to him thankful he shows up when we praise him thankful he's here today it's so good that you are here today yes and we have been privileged this week he's come up unexpected in his visit uh that pastor reggie scarver would be with us today Hallelujah. uh many of you will know him and then there's a lot that in our service today will not but he has uh deep roots here yes pastor reggie was raised in this church this assembly, his mother, uh, he is Ricky's brother. That helps some of you. And uh, just deep roots here. And he showed up Wednesday night. I tried to get him to speak then. And he said, no, I'm not going to do it. But I did talk him into this morning. And I'm so thankful for his willingness. You know, we were able to talk a little after the service. And as we started out and we were in the parking lot, um, you know, I noticed Pastor Reggie, he looked back at our church standing in the parking lot. He said, Kenny, I have a deep appreciation for this church. He said, I really do. And he said, all the people that God has brought up from right out of this little village church and sent all over the world. And uh, it, it's got a dear place in his heart. And him being one of them, not only him, but Biddy, his wife, who was raised in this church. 
So he has a great heritage here and a great love for this church and what it has done as God has greatly used him there in Lakeland, Florida, uh, as well as so many. And we're just honored today to have him, so thankful that he would come and share the words. You're going to be blessed today. I just encourage you to take it in, apply it to your heart and life. Pastor Reggie, would you come this morning? We love you. Take the liberty today. So thankful for you. Good morning, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Can you say amen? Amen. Now with me, you'll get more out of me if you'll holler and talk back to me and make a lot of noise. I am a Pentecostal to the depth of my being. And so I'm here today to enjoy you, and I trust you get a little something out of me. But anyhow, uh, it's an honor to be in this house. It, uh, I was thinking about it. I, I grew up here, of course, as, as uh, I started to say, Pastor Kenny, Brother Kenny. As, I, I, uh, as he was sharing, I grew up here, but also I was saved here. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost here. I was baptized in water through here down at the Croatan Sound. Amen. And uh, I was married in this church. And I'd been here for a two-week revival years ago, 34 years ago. And uh, the board and deacons prayed over me and sent me forth to do what I'm doing today in Lakeland, Florida. So my roots are in this house, and I thank you for what you've sown into my life with every fiber of my being. I don't know what any of us would do if it hadn't been for this place. So can I come down there? Since you don't come up front, I'm coming down there to you. Is that a deal? Is that all right with you? I wish we could move you all up here, but anyhow, I know how it is. So how are you? How are you? Are you good today? Are you full of the Holy Ghost? Are you full of power? Are you full of joy? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. If you'll be full of joy, you'll be full of power and strength. So I want to encourage that. Anyhow, it is, it is such a wonderful thing to be able to talk to you about what I believe are two the greatest gifts we could ever talk about. The first one, of course, gets us ready for heaven. How many of you are glad for the day that you met Jesus? Hallelujah. I'm so glad for the day I met Jesus. I have failed him, but he never failed me. How many of you can say that? I have failed him. How many say, I have failed him? But he's never failed one of us. Can't you say amen? Amen. And Jesus said something so powerful. He said, there is no other name. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but through me. I'm so glad that we don't have many ways today in society. They're painting so many lies out here. I, I agree with the false fake news going on from the sense that's what it is. It's fake. Everybody talking about their story. You don't have a story. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only story we have is the story of the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He said, I've come that you will have life and have life more abundantly. I'm telling you right now, there's not one person has to be depressed. There's not one person has to be under the weather. You can be full of joy and full of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Come on, lift your hands up and give him praise. I'm all for clapping, but I'd rather we lift our hands and just praise him. He said, lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting or any such thing. Because he's good and his mercy endures forever. He's good in that God so loved the world, that's you and me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever, I want you to point yourself, say I'm a whoever. Whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, the only way, hallelujah, might be saved. So the greatest thing that ever happened to us is we were able to be saved. 
Glory to God. I can't imagine what it would be to be lost. I see people go out into eternity, and sometimes you're not sure. They didn't leave a testimony of knowing Jesus. And sometimes I've had to preach their funerals, and it's the saddest thing in the world to preach the funeral of somebody you do not have the confidence made Jesus the Lord of their lives. Friends, that's why faith is so important, because by grace are you saved through faith. It is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Say out loud, salvation is a gift of God. Thank him for it right now. Would you lift your hands up and just thank him for that wonderful gift of salvation. Thank God for it. And so we come today to just honor salvation in our lives. But most of you in this room, you know Jesus. Most of you in this room, you've been filled with the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. But I want you to know too, there is another experience, another gift that's so important. Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you somebody. In other words, just like me. The difference is I can only be in one place at one time, but he can be every place all the time. Hallelujah. He can be all over the world right here with us this morning. He's in Africa today. He's in Australia today. He's in the islands of the sea today. He's all over the world. Praise God. He said, my spirit will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Glory to God. He's everywhere, all the place. Praise God. And he said, I will be with you. You will not be alone. I will not leave you an orphan. I'm going back to the Father so that I can send to you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. So I know this. I love talking about the Holy Spirit. I remember y'all will laugh about this, but uh, m many of you know this. I pastor, I started a Word of Faith church in Lakeland, Florida. And uh, some people said, well, why didn't you start an Assemblies of God church? I, I'm going to have to share with you. Don't, don't get mad at me. This is going to be fun. Just stay with me. I actually was preaching at Southeastern University. All of your superintendents of all the nine districts were there. And I stood up and I said, you know, I'm always in trouble. When I've gone among the Word of Faith people, they tell me I'm too Assembly of God. I go among the Assembly of God people, they tell me I'm too Word of Faith. But I want to tell you something right now. I'm both because I believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and I believe it's by faith. Hallelujah. That it might be by grace that we might all come in because it is not of yourself. It is the gift of God. And without faith, it's not possible to please him. For he who comes to God must of necessity believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God has a plan for you. The enemy's tried to destroy you. He's come at you many times. But God has a plan to raise you up, to use you for his glory. So put your hands up and give him honor. Hallelujah. I've never seen that young man, but I know the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and give him praise. Come on and shout with me this morning. I remember when I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit right here. I remember they had me down front. And they were, one was telling me to hold on, the other was telling me to turn loose, and they were grabbing my jaws and shaking me and all that stuff. And I remember thinking this. I should not admit this to you, but I remember thinking this to myself. If they'd just leave me alone, I could go on and speak in tongues right now. You know something? There's no scripture for tarrying for the Holy Ghost. They tarried on the day of Pentecost. But when the Spirit was poured out, you received the gift by faith. It's available to everyone by faith. I remember Dixie Daniels. He'd sought the Lord for years and years and years. And in that two-week meeting, I remember one time I said, Dixie, get up off the floor. Sit down on that altar. And we're going to lay hands on you. And you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He'd been seeking. I remember Popeye. Years and years and years he sought. You don't have to tarry for the Holy Ghost any more than you tarry for salvation. It's yours for the receiving. Glory to God. Because Jesus said, it's for power. Hallelujah. It's for power. You will receive power, Acts 1.8 says. When or after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And so I grew up around that, and I love it. And you know, so I'm going to tell you why I ended up pastoring the church that I did, which... which uh, uh, you, you really, it's an independent Pentecostal church is the best way I can describe our church. But let me tell you why I did it. It wasn't that I didn't believe in the AG because the superintendent, Brother Johnson, came and he said, Reggie, why in the world don't you put AG over this door? I said, Brother Johnson, I'm more AG than most of your preachers. 
But there was a reason that I did it. Because I knew I could touch Methodist. I could touch Baptist. I could touch Presbyterian. And the, the, the other thing might have held some people back. But we've got Catholics in our church. Born again, spirit-filled Catholics. Hallelujah. Methodists. Presbyterians, Episcopalians, and even some Pentecostals, praise God. But our whole church has become Pentecostal. Why? Because I believe in the power of God with all of my heart. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I remember one time there was a lady in our church. B and I weren't doing very well. We were having a rough time. And there was a lady in our church who was there preaching. She and her husband, he could never get much in because she did all the talking. I remember that. I don't know if you ever heard of a lady by the name of Frances Hunter. Did you all ever hear of her? Yes. Frances Hunter, she was an amazing lady of God. She really was. But I'd grown up in Wanchies. And I'm sitting there watching her. She got on these old long earrings. I know she'll wear them around here now. But when I grew up, it was asthma to have done that. Do you understand? So, so I'm going to pick on you all a little bit because it's fun. We're family. Do you know I'm your family? We're family. But anyhow... Sister Hunter, she's up there talking, going away, and I'm listening to her, and I'm thinking, I wish I could believe that. I wish I could believe that because people were falling under the power and things were happening, and I just thought to myself, you know, I, 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 she, here she is. She contradicts everything I've ever been taught. You know, she, she's up here with these big old red lips and the earrings are streaming, and she just she doesn't fit the profile of what I ever expected. This is a true story. So I'm thinking, well, I'm going to go up there and try this out. So I got in line in the actual church building. I passed her in now. We'd built a new one since then, but it's still there, that building. Anyhow, I'm down on the very right, where, where, over on this side down there, and I'm standing there, and she comes, and she picks up by the Spirit my consternation. <laughs> and so she says to me, what do you want from the Lord? I looked at her as earnest as you could look at any human in the world, and I said, I just want to know that this is real. That's what I wanted to know. She said to me then, why don't you find out? And the minute that woman touched me with all of her outside stuff that I couldn't understand, I fell under the power of God. And from that day to this, there's been something inside me. It's an insatiable hunger for the mighty moving of the Holy Spirit. I had rather have it than anything in the world. And it's not just a denominational thing. It's for all believers yes. everywhere on yes. the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Yes. Let me tell you something. If you're a Methodist, be a Methacostal. If you're a Presbyterian, be a Presbycostal. Whatever you are, if you're Assembly of God, by all means, be a Pentecostal. Yes. Because this is the foundation of how the movement began. It began in Pentecost. Don't you ever let this house become anything but a Pentecostal house of worship where the Spirit of God can flow like he was this morning, where the singers are not embarrassed to speak out in that heavenly language because that language, I'm telling you, it is a language of the Spirit. It is for every believer. It's for you. It's for me. It's for every one of us. But you will receive power after that, the Holy Spirit. It doesn't come before. It's after that. The Holy Spirit comes upon you. Some people, if you talk to a denominational person, and this is why I had to work these things out, they'll say to you, I have the Holy Spirit. And if they're saved, they do. You understand. You can't have Jesus without the Holy Spirit. But there's a difference between salvation and the Holy Spirit coming to live in you and the baptism of the Holy Spirit coming upon you in power and glory. One, salvation gets you ready for heaven. Thank God for that. But the mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit gets you ready for earth so that when you come to your neighbor and God wants to yes. use you, yes. he can empower you to pray over them. You know, if you could just turn it on and off at will, I'd go down and empty out every hospital. It still has to be the mighty gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation. But I'm telling you, once you're a you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're a candidate for greater use for the kingdom of God. God is so good. Come on, say that with me. God is so good. Say this, he's so good to me. Lift your hands and say this with me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Say this, forget not all his benefits. And one of those benefits is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I have to tell you a wonderful story. I told it to Brother Kenny, and I've told it over the years many times. Uh, God allowed me to 
be a dear friend of Brother Dr. Rutland, who was the president of Southeastern for a lot of years, and I love him. He's a wonderful man of God. He came into Pentecost from Methodism, and that's how he got saved and filled in the, with the Holy Spirit was in a, um, a Pentecostal setting. So anyhow, Dr. Rutland had a friend, had a, uh, his brother-in-law was a professor at a university, a secular university. He was not saved. And uh, Dr. Rutland was going down to Mexico to preach. Well, he liked the uh, Mayan ruins, and, the, and this professor wanted to go down there and study that while they're there. But he went to church with him on a, on a night in Mexico. He, Dr. Rutland says that church wasn't much bigger than a chicken coop. He said it was just small. He said there wasn't very many people there. He said, and all he had done was learn enough to greet the people, and they'd have to have an interpreter. He said, so he got there, and they informed him that the interpreter was not able to come. And he's standing there. He doesn't know what to do. He just kind of, the best he could, let the pastor know, I'll greet, because the pastor couldn't speak much English, although he could speak a little. He said, I'll greet, and then I'll turn it over to you, because I can't, I, I, if I don't have an interpreter, I can't speak. Dr. Rutland, this former Methodist, who'd been baptized in the Holy Spirit, stood up in that little uh, church, congregational church, in Mexico, and he started to greet the people in the little bit of Spanish that he knew. Then God gave him another sentence in Spanish, another sentence in Spanish, another sentence in Spanish. Never learned a word of it. This is a true miracle of God. Never had heard one word of it. Another sentence and another one to the point this unsaved professor jumped to his feet and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm surprised too. But this, and he kept right on. He preached his whole message in Spanish. Did you know God downloaded the language in him and he's had it to this day? When he stands up to preach, there's times he'll stand up and pray in Spanish. A miracle of God. God has all kinds of supernatural miracles if we'll believe for them and if we'll stand for them and we won't go along with religion and push all these things out. I'm telling you the power of God is for today. It's for everyone in this room and it's particularly for Pentecostal churches. If we're going to be a Pentecostal church, let's be one. Hallelujah. Don't you dare try to put that off in a room somewhere, but open up and let it flow. I remember after that experience with the hunters, I, would, I was a young businessman at the time, and I would go places and preach. Yeah, not, I'd just preach. I, I should say testify more than anything, and uh, more what I'm doing today probably. But anyhow, I would go to these churches, and, and uh, all of them were Assembly of God churches because that's most of the pastors that I knew at the time, just as a businessman and would share. And I remember God started working. And I remember one time there was an older man. He was down around the front up here sitting, I think they had four sections, and he was in this one, like he'd be right where this gentleman is, and uh, I didn't know this at the time, but the Lord led me over to minister to him, just like I did that boy a while ago, young man, sorry, you're not a boy, you're a boy to me, I understand, and, uh, but he had just a young man, uh, older man, and I went over and laid my hands on him, he fell off the seat into the floor, unbeknowing to me, he had macular degeneration, was losing his sight, and, and was in terrible shape. Did you know God completely healed him that night? And he was the original founder of the Pinellas Lumber Company. I had no idea who it was. I'm telling you, God's got amazing miracles for people. He's got, you say, why doesn't he always do them? I think the only time when you don't see one is when he's got something better. Paul said, I have a, depart, a, a, a desire to be with Christ, to depart and be with God. Notice what he said, which is far better. He said, but to remain here is more needful for you. He said, what I'm going to choose, I can't tell yet. But he chose there to stay with them for a little longer. But we can't make these things work on our own, but we position ourselves through prayer, praying in the Spirit, building ourselves up. On our, Jude says you build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You ought to be riding in your car, praying in tongues. You ought to be in your house, praying in tongues. I remember Molly Daniels. She was at her sink in her house right down the road here. I, 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 your dear brother Charles married her many, many years. She's standing at her sink. Isn't that right, Ruby? And the Spirit of God fell on her, and she was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And never had sung like she sung. Once she was baptized in the Holy Ghost, God gave her a beautiful singing voice. And she used to sing, it took a miracle to put the stars in 
and spades. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you this thing's real. Come on. Come on and shout and give him praise. Give him honor. You say, what are you doing today? I'm just stirring you up by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. I just felt to come in and stir you by the Spirit of God. I've seen people, some one of the most amazing things God has done to change people. You know, and there's nothing new here. I don't know if you know that. But the founder of Methodism, uh, John Wesley, he used to be, get up to preach and the power would fall and people would fall all over the power of God. George Whitfield, he would get up and hundreds would fall under the power of God. This is nothing new. These men knew the Spirit and they had utterances in the Holy Spirit. They were spirit filled people. Hallelujah. I mean, you can go back in most of these denominational churches and there was a day they were on fire. Don't you let that fire go out of your denomination. Hallelujah. Let's stay full of the Holy Ghost and full of power. Glory to God. You Charles Finney, when Charles Finney would stand up to preach, they would come and sit in trees so they could hear him and get above the crowd. And he'd get up and he said, I'm not preaching until you come down out of those trees. Because while he was preaching, they'd hear a cathud, a cathud, a cathud. Hallelujah. George, one of those men went out one day. He was out preaching. And uh, anyhow, they, he was invited to a dance. He heard there's a dance going on. Well, you know, they didn't dance. They're holiness people. Holiness people don't go to secular dances. Anyhow, I won't get over there. <laughs> Anyhow, sorry. Amen. Especially back then. Okay, we'll put that in there. But anyhow, this preacher, he said, the Lord said to him, go to the dance. Got quiet in here, didn't it? Got quiet when I read it. Dead quiet. He said, go to the dance. He said, Lord, I, I've never, I, I don't do that. I, I'm, I'm not going to a dance. He said, but I'd learned the voice of the Lord. He said, I didn't know what else to do, so I went to the dance. He said, I'm standing in the air. I'm standing up against the wall. And this young lady came and asked me to dance with her. He said, so I didn't know what to do. I walked down in the middle of the floor. And he said, so finally, I just spoke up and said, now, I don't do anything but what I pray first. He said that he started bellowing out a prayer. He never had to dance because as he was praying, he heard a cathud over here. He heard a cathud over there. He heard another cathud over here. Uh, we have history of God moving in mighty, mighty ways. It's a true story from our historical records of Pentecostal power. Hallelujah. And before he was done, there wasn't a band member. There wasn't a person standing. They had all fallen under the mighty power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I've seen that power fall in, in uh, I remember one time in the Omni Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. There was a guy there, he was the, he, he was the uh, well, eventually became the president of Yamaha International Corporation, Ron Rob was his name. I'm standing there in the power of God, we're standing there, and I'm just sharing Jesus with him in an elevator. And sharing Jesus with him, he fell under the power of God. I'm telling you, I've seen some wonderful things, nothing like what those guys saw, but I'm telling you, it's wonderful to see God move. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to see God move. I remember when that power started operating on me one night years ago. I was awakened in the middle of the night. I had Sister Texie Meekins on my mind. I, I didn't know why, but I hadn't seen her in several years. But I had her deeply in my heart and on my mind. I started praying in the Holy Ghost. And the next thing you know, I received groanings in the Holy Spirit. I couldn't stop. It was like something took hold with me together against whatever was going on. I knew something bad was going on, but I didn't know what it was. And so about a week later, I got the victory during that, that night. I got the victory and started singing. You say, how do you know when you got the victory? The burden lifts off, you get a psalm. Hallelujah. And you praise and worship the Lord. But um, that, that's exactly what happened with Sister Texie. That burden lifted off me. About a week later, my mom was still living. I said, Mom, how's Sister Texie? She said, Honey, didn't you know she almost died last week? Did you know the power of God? And let me tell you what's interesting about that. Years ago, Sister Texie, before she was a Pentecostal, was a Methodist. And she was up in her Methodist, she was a Methodist, and she was up in her house one day, and the Spirit of God said to her, Go down to Mertz. That's my grandmother. They, they had uh, uh, um, a house over there with a big barn in the back, and in the barn there was this, um, this old upright piano. 
and I being a little three-year-old boy, I'd gone out there because I loved music, and I started banging on that old upright piano. Well, my grandmother, my Mert, she, it wasn't like it is today. You can't leave kids for a minute today. But back then, she'd run over to my granddaddy's store to pick something up. She's coming right back. But Sister Taxi obeyed God. God sent her down to Mert, said, go to Mert's house right now. She went down to my Mert. She heard me in there screaming to the top of my voice. She went in and lifted that lead, and my fingers were like just, uh, what do you call it, pancakes, like a pan, I think fritters or whatever. Anyhow, just as flat as they could be. See, years before I interceded for her, God had sent her to save my fingers. There's reciprocity in the Spirit. There's all kinds of wonderful things in the Holy Spirit, things we've never heard of or never seen. God's bigger. He's taller. He's broader. He's wider and deeper than we can imagine. And he'll do exceeding abundantly above everything according to Ephesians 3.20 that we could ask or think. How? According to his power yeah. that works in us. Yeah. According to his power. Yeah. His power is real. And he wants to become in every one of you. Thank you, Jesus. But you shall receive power. Yeah. What's the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Oh, come on. Start Hallelujah. speaking in that language right now. I don't Hallelujah. preach too long. I don't want to overpreach. Go ahead and begin right. Just take advantage of what's been given to you. The second greatest gift. The first one you've received. You can't have the second one without the first one. But if you've been saved, lift your voice and begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. I didn't want to throw any of you. Thank you. I want you to play a little bit, if you will. Uh, I don't want to throw any of you from, from what I said a little earlier about not having to tarry. But I want you to know it's a gift. You don't tarry for gifts. There are things... I heard one preacher say, and I loved it. He said, go ahead and get filled and then tarry all you want to. We all should be tarrying. But we, it makes you tarrying a whole lot easier when you can pray in a heavenly language. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do it right now. Just lift him up. Lift, lift your voice up and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Come on, pray out in that heavenly language. I was down in Peru, uh, Arequipa, Peru one time. I'd been invited to this church, this large church to preach. And uh, I preached on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And that night, I don't know how many came forward to receive, way more than you had time to lay hands on. And it was the first time in my life that I thought, God, there's too many to lay my hands on. And I felt prompted by the Spirit. Just pray a prayer. And my spirit will fill them. And it was amazing. Now, I didn't know if they're speaking in tongues, in Spanish or tongues. I didn't know the difference, but the people around me started saying, they're speaking in tongues. They're speaking in tongues. They're speaking. And do you know, ever since then, that's the way I've ministered the baptism in the Holy Spirit. If there's anybody in this room today that's not been filled, let us all begin to pray. And right where you sit, right where you sit, just open your voice and begin Marom Bradisi La Prefeneni. Go ahead. Just right where you sit. You can receive it right there. You can have hands laid on you. There's a lot of ways to receive. You can tarry, you just don't have to. Praise God. There's a lot of ways you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and let him let him enter you in a special way. Let him come upon you in a special way. He's here this morning. His presence is here. He has a work to do in each of our lives. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Don't, don't you hold back one bit. Just go ahead and praise him. Give him praise in his house today. Would you do that? Hallelujah. Somebody asked me, how do you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Well, let me just mention, go ahead and just be talking while I'm talking to you. I want you to think about this. If you knew Spanish today and you knew English, you could not speak in both languages at the same time. You could only speak in one or the other. If you're believing God for the prayer language of the Holy Spirit, go ahead right now in the name of Jesus. I say receive you the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. Just receive you the Holy Spirit. And if you say, it's been a while since I've been praying in that heavenly language, go ahead right now. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. He will fill your mouth with good things. Hallelujah. So that your youth is renewed 
like the eagles. Hallelujah. Go ahead and sing something, Kat. We're going to just worship a minute. Go ahead. All over this house. We're going to go in a few minutes. I stopped a little early. Feel this atmosphere. That's right. That's right. That's beautiful. Some of you are just praying beautiful. Jasura para nombre. Oh, hallelujah. You are welcome here. Come fill this place. Ah, glory. Now, would you lift your hands up with me, everybody who will. Father, I thank you for the joy of being able to flow easily in this house because the ignition of your spirit is in this house. I thank you for how easy it is to just flow in your house. And Father, I just thank you that you said from glory to glory we're being changed, from faith to faith and glory to glory. I thank you that just this other moment of your presence will just take us a little higher, a little deeper, a little broader. Come and Father, work in our lives. Thank you. Thank you. You know, a lot of folks don't realize this. Let me just share this a moment. When I grew up, and this, this is only where people were at the time, we, uh, we hope we're all growing. Can you say amen? But I knew, I knew that being baptized in the Holy Spirit was the initial evidence of speech of speaking in tongues. That, that's how you knew it. When somebody spoke in tongues, it was the evidence they had received. And I still believe that to this day. It is the initial physical evidence that you receive. But beyond that, I didn't know the purpose. I didn't know the purpose. But friends, I want you to know what the real purpose is. The greater and most important purpose is that you have a language for prayer that goes beyond what you know to pray with your mind. Thank God. You, you thank God that he goes past our minds. Hallelujah. There's a language in the Spirit. You didn't learn it. It was downloaded via the Holy Spirit. He just dropped that in us. Hallelujah. And you can pray about things next week, next month, next year. You had no idea about it. One day I was reading in Revelation. I read in chapter 5. It talked about the prayers of the saints laying up uh, things in golden vials for the last days. And then I went and read chapter 8, and I read the same thing, that the prayers of the saints are being laid up for the last days. And I heard the Lord say, if prayers can be laid up for the last days, they can be laid up for your days. Hallelujah. You don't know what's coming tomorrow, but the Holy Spirit does. You don't know what's coming next month, but the Holy Spirit does. He can give prayers today that can be poured out. Hallelujah. On your behalf tomorrow. Glory. So just be being filled. Ephesians says, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And this says, be being filled. So come on, one more time. I don't mean to wear you out, but just one more time. Lift your voice and praise Him. Go ahead. Just lift your hands and lift your voice and praise Him. Just one more time in this house. Hallelujah. Call it. Ask come on. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. His presence is here today. I want to just give two opportunities here. There are some, as Pastor Reggie has spoke, you've never received this baptism in the Holy Spirit. He wants to do that today. He wants to fill you today. 
I want to ask this, this morning if you would come. This is your opportunity to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, this marvelous, wonderful gift of the Lord. And if you are here today and you've never received, I'm going to ask that you would come and stand up here. And you say, well, couldn't he, couldn't he fill me in my seat? Yes, as he said, he can fill you in your seat. But you can also take a step of faith toward him. Step toward him today. What you have heard is encouraging. It's truth that you have heard today. This is real. He is real. He wants to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And if you've never received, I'm going to ask if you would come. Any of you dare challenge, you come today. You need this power. You need this power where you the church needs this power. It's there for our benefit. We're going to give you opportunity. I want you to stand across here and we're going to pray for you. But he also said, be being filled. Be being filled is continual. That's for the church. I'll tell you, I've been filled this morning just hearing the word. Haven't you? You've been filled sitting here. The church, you need a refilling today. These altars are going to be open for you to come and just continue to worship. Kneel, pray, however you want, but be being filled. You need a charge today. Church, we need a refilling today of his power. So if you've never received, come and stand and let us agree with you. If you just like for a refilling today and, and just let him refresh you, come. As Cass sings it this morning, today these altars are open. Pastor Reggie, we thank you so much. Come on, church, and receive what you have need of today. Hallelujah, Cass. You need that feeling today. Stand today. Let us pray with you. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see it. That wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see it. That wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you 
you just 